Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please pray with me. Blessed Lord, since you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may so hear them. Listen. Read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life through the word, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Listening is hard work, isn't it? It's because there are so many voices. There are so many voices. Today is Super Bowl Sunday. You're going to hear a lot of noise and voices today. You'll watch the game and you'll hear the fans roar and yell and the ref makes a call that goes against this team, their team. They'll groan and they boo. And if a call goes against the other team, then the other half of the attendees there, well, they'll raise up and shout and try to boo the refs off of the field. Those are voices. And then the commercials, and there are the commercials. These, uh, these marketing companies uh, spend millions of dollars for a 30-second commercial because the audience will be 100 million viewers, and they want to get their message across. Now, some of these commercials won't even have words. I saw a show with previews of some past commercials and future commercials, and yet it's a voice. It says something. It says, buy this product or support this cause or do this with your life. It's a voice. So many voices. Have you ever noticed how many voices are speaking to us these days? Today, right now, you hear my voice. But I'll add this early on. Within my voice, you'll hear God's voice, but I'm talking about any day of the week, tomorrow when you go to work and so forth, when the, when the world gets back into its routine. The voices of newscasters, the voices of government leaders, there are the voices of songwriters, there are the voices of YouTubers, the voices of bloggers, and oh my yes, the voices of political candidates, the political candidates and then the experts, the pundits, who try to interpret the message of the voices of the political candidates, it permeates our lives right now. And then the voices of television and movie actors and so on and so forth. And I don't even count the voices of your boss, your coworkers, your spouse, hmm, your own inner voice of what you should do and not do, hmm, setting priorities, things like that. The voices of your... T your kids, or in my case, my kids call us grandma and grandpa. We got married late in life, and we had our children, and they'd say, come on, Gramps, let's play hoops. And I'd go, are you talking to me? Yes, we're talking to you. So I'd go out there and play hoops, wheezing and coughing. The voices of our children. There are assorted voices speaking to us each and every day. Therefore, take a moment. Let's take a moment and account for the voices you each hear each day and consider what they're saying. And also consider if the voice is from God or of God because you see there are voices out there which are not only disassociated with God, but they are also anti-God. I read a statistic yesterday. I wish I would have uh, written it down but the percentage of people in the United States who have dismissed God out of their lives, who are irreligious, has risen from like 24% to 31% in like five years. I remember the title of it. It was on my phone. It was God, Enough of God Bless America. That offends me, but it doesn't offend other people. They're dead serious. We don't want to hear the voice of God. Hmm. In addition to considering what these voices are saying, let's consider where the voice is coming from. Is this the voice of God? Or is this a voice, whatever it is, whatever its message, not whatever its message, but it could be the source or a message that will lead you and me into the captivity of darkness, anti-light, addiction, 
Mm. Uh, pleasure seeking. Uh, and indeed, the captivity of sin, death, and the power of the devil. It was Woody Allen who said, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not afraid to die. I just don't want to. I'm not afraid of death. Help me out. I'm not, we read this yesterday. Woody Allen, I'm not afraid of death. I just don't want to be there when it comes around. That's a captivity. That's a captivity that the voice, certain voices give. The voice of sin, the voice of the old tempter. God's voice has been around for a long, long time. God's voice has been around from the beginning. Genesis 1-3. Let there be light, he said. Remember last Sunday's sermon when we talk about causative power? That Jesus' words could cause or effect certain things. He rebuked the demon and the demon came out. God's voice has causative power. It always has. Let there be light and there was light. The voice of God not only caused or brought about light, but also water and land and vegetation and living creatures. And following the creation of all this, God's voice didn't go silent, but it continued to speak. God's voice continued to speak. Genesis 1, It's kind of like, hmm, now what? He says out loud. Oh, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make man in our image after our likeness. In Genesis 2, 18, God said his voice out loud, it is not good that Adam should be alone. I will make a helper fit for him. And then God's voice gives direction, gives restrictions, helps us to live um, an undestructive and uninjured, a, a painless life. You can eat of every tree in the garden, he tells the man, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in that day you shall eat of it, you shall surely die. You know, God's commandments, God's will for our lives, which is written down, is to help us live safe and happy lives. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that? You're unfaithful in your marriage. You bring upon yourself pain. You disrespect your parents. You bring upon yourself disrespect for yourself. Hmm? You hurt someone, you not only hurt them, you could end up in jail. God's commandments, his voice helps us this life and to prepare for the one to come. But Adam and Eve, no, 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 no. They're like me. They're like you. Why? Why did you say? No. Did you hear what I said? No, no. What did you say? They didn't listen to the voice of God. Rather, they were persuaded by a different voice. A different voice. And that's part of the human existence. There are so many voices, not just God. So, so what do we do? Give up? Hmm? Dismiss God's voice because it's too... No. We train ourselves to listen to God's voice. Like Peter and James and John had to do. Hmm? And to dismiss the voices that lead to the captivity of sin, death, and the power of the devil. We need to discern. It's a big, bat. It's a big word, which means we need to be a little bit picky. Hmm? A little bit choosy. Forrest Gump quoted his mother in the film, which now has become a classical line of moviedom. Mama said, life, you can almost say it with me, is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. He wasn't choosy. To extend the analogy, let's say I don't like walnuts. Mm, they make me sick or I just don't like the taste of them. But I know they put nuts in chocolates. And so I have a hunch there might be a chocolate life with walnuts in it, which makes me sick, which is distasteful, which is really worse than that. It could lead me to a life of darkness, sin, death, and the power of the devil. So what do I do? I open up the box and I kind of research what is in front of me. Hmm. And I look, and it says, that one looks bumpy, huh? And it's got a hard center. That might not have a walnut in it. I'm not going to pop that into my mouth. On the other hand, I like chocolate-covered cherries. They don't make me sick, 
and I could eat a dozen of them, one of them in one sitting. What am I going to do in life? This box of chocolates. I'm going to look for a mound of chocolate that has a soft center. And there's a chance that this will be something, I won't say good for me, but something that I like. Hmm. Get the idea? Discerning the array, the assortment of voices is important in this life so you can have a safe, peaceful, productive, God-pleasing life and you can discover the chocolate, if you will, that promise you, promise you eternal life. It's important to discern voices that are encouraging us to discern all voices. And a lot of them are encouraging us to eat the walnut chocolate, to think, to feel, to behave, and to believe in certain ways. Think only of yourself. Dismiss God. Who needs him? Pleasure and power and greed and money and sexual forays, that's what will bring you happiness and sweetness. Consider the scene. Let's go to the text. Consider the gospel scene of Peter, John, and James with Jesus on the mount. First of all, there's a lot to see. We're talking about that sense now. There's a lot to see. Jesus' face is altered. His face is altered. And then they look down at his clothes, and his clothes are sparkling with light. And then they see there there's, there, there are people with him, historical people, Moses and Elijah. I see in the newspaper there's a play in Los Angeles which is called Discord. And it's about historical characters, three of them, Thomas Jefferson, Charles Dickens, and Leo Tolstoy, who get together and they have a conversation about life, about life. Now, these are all intelligent men, and they were wonderful writers, and they have their own gospel, if you will, their own handle on life, historical characters. With Jesus, there are historical characters. Now, there's three out there, but they're not competing. Moses and Elijah are deferring to the Lord Jesus. Their testimony in the Old Testament, centuries before, pointed to Jesus. So there's no competition like is Jefferson smarter or Tolstoy or Dickens is smarter. There's no competition. Is it Moses or Elijah or Jesus whom we pick? The Bible points to Jesus, to Jesus. And, and then they, they, they listen. And there's some voices. First of all, it's Peter's voice. Peter's voice says, oh, this is cool. Let's build some huts, some booths, and stay here. That's a reference to when the children of Israel were in the wilderness for 40, 40 years. In fact, the Jewish people to this day, it's usually September, October, they have the Feast of the Booths. And the booths are the protection they got, the tents that they lived in for 40 years till they got to the Promised Land. Sometimes I think we're that way, we Christians. In the short time I've been here with you, I, and it's not just Grace Church, but it's a lot of churches. Lutherans are pretty good at this. We want to build a hut. We want to build a booth and stay here because it's comfortable. And the Lord says, no, no, this is where I don't want, I don't want you to stay here. Jesus says, I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to go to Jerusalem and do my mission. And I don't think Peter liked that. He was too comfortable. Are we too comfortable? Do we just kind of want to hunker down? And the Lord Jesus says, no, 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 I'm not hunkering down. I'm going out into all the world. I'm sending my church to all the world, not to build booths, but to keep people's, to have them hear the promise that there's an eternal home. God is our refuge and strength. God is our booth. Heaven is our booth. This is temporary. We're on a camping trip. And sometimes we churches and pastors too, we're comfortable. We don't want to hear the voice of Jesus. Speaking of the voice of Jesus, as Peter talks, he finally shuts up. Actually, he's interrupted. <clears throat> there's a voice from the cloud. And the voice from the cloud says, <clears throat> this is my son. 
Listen to him. So the voice of the father says, listen to the voice of the son. Listen to the voice of the son. Do you do that in your life? Do you do that in your life? I know you all have problems. We all have problems. Some are, uh, some are small, but we're, there are problems. That's what makes it so perplexing. We're emotionally involved in our own lives. We have to get along with people. And they have to get along with us, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But do we invite the voice of Jesus in our problems, whether they're this size or this size? God says there's a lot of voices out there. This is my son. Listen to him. Listen to him. Especially your spiritual problems. Especially your spiritual problems where you don't feel saved. You don't feel good enough to go to heaven. You don't feel like your sins are forgiven. And the old enemy keeps knocking at your door and tell you what a lousy person you are. You are a lousy person, and so am I. But Jesus' voice says, I've taken care of that because of my perfect life on your behalf and my death on the cross and my laying in the tomb for parts of three days. And on that third day, the first day of the week, I rose from the dead your lousiness is taken care of. God declares you a saint. A saint. What? You don't have to wait for the Pope to beatify you. By the way, that's ridiculous. We're all saints. We're all saints for the sake of Jesus. Listen to that voice. And when there's a, the devil tries to convince you otherwise, or here's the trick, in this postmodern age, there are new gospels out there. There are new Gospels. You've noticed that. Christianity has been deemed old-fashioned, out of style, hmm. out of style. But it isn't out of style because Jesus himself says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the lantern, the light of the world. Jesus speaks with authority. Well, it's getting late. How can I wrap this up? Mama said life is like a box of voices. You never know what you're going to get. You're going to get a lot. You're going to get a lot. This afternoon is a perfect example. There'll be so many voices telling you what you're missing in life, and you better go after it. Mm -hmm. Jesus has a voice, too. He says, I'll tell you what you're missing in life. You're missing forgiveness of sins, and you're missing heaven. And somebody said to me at the service last week, last week, he says, Pastor, I, you, you preach a lot about forgiveness of sins, and I appreciate that. And he said that. Tell us a little bit more about now what? Now what? Jesus gives you that. He gives you that. Now that you're on your way to heaven, now what? What does he say? He says, hmm, be kind, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. Hmm? Treat one another gently. Now what? Jesus says, love your enemies. Now what? The voice of Jesus says, don't be anxious about anything. Cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Now what? What does Jesus say? Be steadfast. Well, Paul said that. But the spirit of Christ is in Paul. Be steadfast. Steadfast about what? Lutheran stubborn? Well, on Jesus, yes. Unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, for you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Let's get better at listening, at being picky about this box of chocolates, voices, and listen to his life, life. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your, hey, let's change it. Keep your ears on the voice of Jesus into life everlasting. 
Amen.